You know, I remember when my wife became pregnant with our first child and thinking to myself, I hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses me with a daughter so that I can name her after my mother, rahmatullah alayha, May. Many times people ask me why I named my daughter May. It was the name of my mother, rahmatullah alayha. And I remember, subhanAllah, making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah blesses me with a daughter. And then finally, you know, going to the doctor and seeing on that ultrasound that it was indeed a girl. And I was so happy, bursting with joy, ready to tell everyone that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with a daughter. Unfortunately, the reaction that I got was not exactly the one that I was expecting. Many people responded with uh, duas in Arabic, May Allah replace that one with a boy. Hopefully you'll get lucky the next time and Allah will give you a boy. And I thought to myself, wow, we still live in a culture like this. And unfortunately, the fact of the matter is until now, people fail to cherish and recognize the blessing of a daughter. And if we look at the time that Rasulullah came, you know, you have to understand that not only were the Arabs of Jahiliya uh, vicious towards their daughters, and not only did they, you know, not consider their daughters to be a blessing, but in fact, they considered them to be a curse. But actually, this was the culture for years and years before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all around the world. In fact, you'll find uh, that this was the case in, in uh, you know, we would, we would obviously assume, you know, Southeast Asia and things of that sort, but even in biblical scripture and Ecclesiasticus um, in the Catholic Bible, the Catholic Church had to deal with this verse where it says the birth of a daughter is, is a loss. So it was always considered that way. And here you have the Prophet ﷺ coming and one of the first verses that's revealed to the Prophet ﷺ amongst the society of people that bury their daughters alive was When the young girl that was buried alive will ask, for what reason was will be asked, for what reason were you killed? She will testify in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against her murderer. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemned the behavior of the Arabs when they would take their young girls and they would bury them alive. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described to us their attitude, the way that they used to view uh, their daughters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Nahl, أَحَدُهُمْ بِالْأُنْثَىٰ Whenever one of them is given the bushra, the blessing, the glad tiding of a young girl, uh, you would see that their faces, وَجُوهُمْ مُسْوَدَّةً You would find that their faces are darkened. Uh, and why that and that person is, is full of grief on the inside. They are embarrassed. They're trying to hide their faces from the people because of the bad news that they received. And they're struggling within themselves whether they should bury their daughters or whether they should live in humiliation or they should bury their daughters to fulfill the tradition. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, What a terrible judgment that they make in that regard. And I want you to think about this for a moment. You know. These were human beings that were bringing themselves to do that. And some of them, you know, they struggled with this. You might have heard the story of Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, bearing his daughter alive in Jahliya. But in fact, that's not an authentic narration. It's a fabricated narration because Umar radiallahu anhu had four daughters uh, and he was actually named Abu Hafsa. Abu Hafsa, whenever Islam came. But we do have people, Sahaba, that came to the Prophet and confessed to the Prophet that they were indeed guilty of this grievous practice. Amongst them was uh, Qais who came to the Prophet uh, Qais ibn Asim and told him that I buried many daughters before uh, Islam. You know, what should I do? And you know, some of the scholars here comment that this is the one thing that the Prophet legislated an expiation. Although it was not made mandatory, although it is not, it was not sent down as an obligation, but the Prophet said that a person should do something to expiate for something that they did in Jahiliya. The Prophet told them you should free a slave for each and every single person, each and every single one of those daughters um, that you, you killed. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, all I have is camels. I own a bunch of camels. So the Prophet said, then free a camel. Uh, or I'm sorry, donate a camel for each one of those daughters that you killed. Uh, you know, and some of the scholars said that's the only time the Prophet ﷺ did that. There is even a more explicit narration in Sunan Adarami, where a man came to the Prophet ﷺ and told the Prophet ﷺ about this terrible incident uh, that took place in his own life, where he says that, you know, when my daughter was born, I loved her, I fell in love with her, she loved me. And you know, I used to call her name and she used to come running to me and she was growing up and she was getting more and more beautiful and I didn't know what to do with, with her because he had an attachment to her. The human being, the mawadda, the fitrah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in that person to love his daughter, it was there. 
right? You know, he, he said I was attached to her and she was attached to me. I used to come home and play with her. But as she was getting older, I didn't know what to do with myself. You know, everyone was, was burying their daughters. And here I am and I, and, and I still haven't buried my daughter. So one day he says that I told her, I, you know, I told her to pick out a pretty dress. And I told her that we were going to a celebration at her uncle's house. And on the way there, he said to, to Rasulullah I pushed her into a well. And she grabbed on and she called out to me. Imagine this daughter calling out to her father, Oh my father, you know, why are you doing this to me? Why are you leaving me? And he said that, you know, I'd be overcome with emotion in, at one moment and I'd start to pick her up and then, you know, the shaitan would get the best of me. You see, he was fighting his fitrah, the natural emotion, compassion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put inside of him. He was fighting that and he said, I'd let her go back in. And she called me and she said, Don't break the trust that was given to you. And Rasulullah was crying and weeping so heavily when this man was talking that the Prophet's beard became soaked and the Prophet was choked with tears. He didn't even know what to say. And Rasulullah said to him, he said, you know, if I could punish anyone for something that they did in jahliya, in ignorance, I would punish you. But Allah has forgiven everyone for what they've done in ignorance. So turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. So this barbaric mentality, which by the way, even in, in our modern days, you know, in our, we'll see uh, honor killings, we'll see people kill their daughters, we'll see, we, we had the recent story in India where the, fa where the father stuffed his daughter's mouth with sawdust until she, until she died. Terrible stories. In China with the one child policy, you know, because couples could only have one child until now, by the way, uh, you know, if, 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 if it turned out to be a daughter, they would hope that she would die and they'd actually start to take steps to make sure that she dies so that their first child and their only child would be a son. We hear about this all the time, but we forget that in our deen, this ignorance was lifted. Not only that, but the Prophet ﷺ taught us to cherish our daughters. We should be pleased when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with daughters uh, and, and we should do our best to fulfill that amana to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know, there's a funny incident that took place where a man came to Imam Ahmad rahimahullah and he told Imam Ahmad, he said, you know, yeah Imam, you know, uh, my wife only gives birth to girls. They didn't understand science very well back then. <laughs> said, my wife only gives birth to daughters. And he said, I have three daughters. What do I do? And Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah, he said, Abshir, you should be happy. Congratulations. You are the closest one to the Sunnah because the Prophet ﷺ was only survived by daughters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't allow any of the boys of the Prophet ﷺ to live a long life. Okay, so this is like the Prophet ﷺ. And Rasulullah ﷺ actually has stated that there is more virtue in having daughters than sons. And the Prophet ﷺ said in Sahih Muslim, very, a very beautiful and profound hadith. He said, مَنْ رَبَّ تِفْلَتَيْنِ Whoever raises two daughters, وَأَحْسَنَ تَرْبِيَتُهُمَا And he and he's great, and you know, he, he does his best to raise them right, you know, to, to give them compassion, to show them care, to show them love, to show them loyalty. And to, and to teach them the proper way. Rasulullah said that he will be with me. He will be with me on the day of judgment like these two fingers. Just like this. The same reward that the Prophet said is guaranteed for the one who takes care of the orphan. He'll be with me like this in Jannah. And in another hadith, the Prophet said, whoever takes care of three daughters, and is patient with them and shows mercy towards them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow them to protect him, to shield him from the hellfire. And some of the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, what about two daughters? And Rasulullah said, and two. And one of the Sahaba said, and Ya Rasulullah, what about one daughter? And Rasulullah said, and one. Right, so here we see a preference that's given to, to showing our, you know, to raising our daughters properly. And we have to understand, Allah knows what He gave us. Right? And, and we look in, in Surah Ali Imran, the mother of Maryam alayhi salam radiallahu anha, when she called Hinna bint Faqood, when she called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she dedicated the child in her stomach uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, she was sure it was going to be a boy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَتْ Rabbi, إِنِّي وَضَعْتُهَا أُنثَى She said, Oh Allah, I gave birth to a girl. And Allah breaks away from the story and tells us, Wallahu a'lamu bima wada'at. Allah knows what He gave her. So instead of her just having a prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have just gave her Isa alayhi Allah put in her lineage the best woman that ever existed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her through that woman Isa alayhi and she still gets the reward for that. 
right? So why why not think in that manner that you know maybe I can I can have the greatest you know amongst the greatest women I can raise this daughter to be amongst the greatest women and maybe Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will give me through that woman m many more children, right? That will that will carry on that legacy and that will continue to provide me good deeds. Also, we find from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that not only did he uh, praise you know, having a daughter, and not only did he show us that we should be grateful when we have a daughter, but the Prophet ﷺ treated his daughters with such love and compassion. When Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha would walk into the room, the Prophet ﷺ would leave his seat and he would and he would give Fatima radiallahu anha the, the place, the space that he was sitting in. In his last moments, Rasulullah ﷺ calls Fatima radiallahu anha and whispers into her ear, giving her the news that he's going to die, and then giving her the news that she would be the first one to join him in Al Jannah. Right? This love and compassion, Umama radiallahu anha. In, in Al-Bukhari, it's narrated that the Prophet ﷺ was once praying and he was holding Umama while he was praying and whenever he would go down, he would place her uh, on the ground and then when he'd come back up, he'd pick her back up and he'd hold her in Salah. Giving us legislation, by the way, tashri'ah, showing us that it's permissible to do so. And we find even with someone like Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anha, an anhu, one of my favorite, favorite narrations, you know, because it shows you the human side of the Sahaba, Al-Bara' radiallahu anhu narrates in Al-Bukhari that one time Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu walked in and Aisha radiallahu anha while she was still a young girl under his care was laying there and she was sick. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he sat down next to her and he kissed her on the cheek and he said, Kayfa haluki? How are you, oh my dear daughter? How are you? Oh, oh my dear daughter, you know, kissing her on the cheek, showing compassion to her. SubhanAllah, this is the way that the Sahaba treated their daughters. This is the way the Prophet ﷺ taught us to treat our daughters. And it's, it's unfortunate that even in our civilized communities, in our civilized societies, so-called civilized societies, we still have this backwards mentality that a daughter is lost. We should not think that way. And you'll find even in, in very wealthy households, you know, I'm going to send my son to be a alim. I'm going to teach him the Quran. Hopefully my son will be a hafid. If I have a daughter, ha. Huh. You know, hopefully she knows Qul huwa Allah ahad, inshallah we'll be alright then. You know, we, we did our job. No! Why do we have such a lack of female scholarship in our community? It's because of the failure of parents and also at the same time, the lack of gratefulness and gratitude that we have to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by not fulfilling the amana of treating our daughters well and raising them on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be great women like Maryam, like Khadija, like Aisha, like Fatima, like Asiya, like Hajar and hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shield us from the hellfire as a result of that. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us a people that cherish our daughters, that raise them with good tarbiyah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those whose daughters will protect them from the hellfire and enter them into Jannah along with our families in the companionship of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in the highest level of Jannah al-Firdaus. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullahu khayran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.